the Jet Setting Wealth Advisory Podcast, where your financial journey takes flight with David T. U. As an airline pilot and financial expert, David merges the aviation industry and wealth management to help you navigate today's complex financial skies. Each episode features expert insight, blending personal stories with essential financial strategies. We ask that you fasten your seatbelts and sit back as we prepare for takeoff. Our destination, your financial empowerment. Welcome to the Jet Setting Wealth Advisory Podcast. I'm your host, David T. Yu. And today we're thrilled to have KJ McCarter with us. KJ is a certified public accountant, renowned for his expertise in tax analysis, business development, and client management. In this episode, we'll dive into how you can optimize the financial advantages of owning an aircraft and tackle the intricacies of tax planning. Fasten your seatbelt and join us for this enlightening discussion. So in terms of KJ McCarter, let's talk about a little bit his background. He joined Aviation Tax Consultants in the spring of 2021. Again, he's a CPA and assists with tax analysis, business development, and client management. KJ graduated with the highest distinction from Indiana University's Kelly School of Business, earning his BS, that's Bachelor of Science, in Accounting and Finance. He began his career at the big four public accounting firm in Chicago before accepting an advisory role here at Aviation Tax Consultants. KJ resides in Chicago, Illinois with his wife, Alex, and enjoys golfing, snow skiing, and spending time with his friends and family. His website, aviationtaxconsultants.com. So welcome, KJ. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on, David. You bet. So let's get right to the questions. KJ, your journey from graduating from the highest extinction of Indiana University's Kellogg School of Business to joining Aviation Tax Consultants is very impressive. Can you share with us what inspired you to shift from the big four public accounting firm to specializing in aviation tax consulting? Sure. Yeah. So when I graduated from Kelly at IU, my thought was to go work for a big four accounting firm in Chicago um, and get some experience there. Obviously, I actually was in the uh, assurance practice as an auditor at that time. Um, And I had grown up uh, around aviation tax uh, consultants and aviation tax planning because my father was a a co-founder of this business. So I was always around it. Um, and always really knew in the back of my mind that this is what I wanted to do um, and, and wanted to come back and be a part of this company and be a, be a tax planner here. Um, but that move got accelerated, uh, unfortunately, because my dad got sick in, uh, in 2021. Uh, he was diagnosed with brain cancer. I always knew I wanted to work with them uh, and I knew I didn't have a whole lot of time to do it. So I came back in 2021 uh, in order to do that and got to work with him for a, for a couple of years. Um, so that's, that's what prompted my move back. And, uh, and and as far as being a CPA and and someone in the, in the tax planning world goes, getting to work with aircraft is about as good as it gets. So, um, I'm happy to be here and and really enjoying my, my work and, uh, and and enjoying this industry. Very, very fun industry. Fantastic. So I would be remiss if I didn't ask, how is your dad? Unfortunately, he passed away in 2022. Um, but very, very fortunate to, to have had the chance to work with them. Very glad I came back and was able uh, to do that. And he really go- laid the groundwork for what uh, Aviation Tax Consultants is today. He was uh, obviously co founders with the company since day one back in 2003. Um, so uh, ha- had a, a really good opportunity to spend some time with them working at, the, at, at ATC until, uh, until 22. Well, I'm sorry for your loss back in 2022, but I'm so happy that you had the fortunate uh, time, uh, a window of time to be able to uh, spend time with him, work with him and engage in his business that he started. Yeah. So in terms of, uh, in terms of the unique, um, um, in terms of the unique uh, uh, aspects of aviation tax planning uh, it is obviously a very specialized field. What are some of the unique challenges and opportunities that you encounter in aviation tax 
consulting that differs significantly from just your traditional tax planning? Yeah, for a lot of people, this is uh, their first time purchasing an aircraft. It's it's something that's completely new to the taxpayer themselves. They have some familiarity with the other pieces of their tax return because it's pretty consistent year to year. This is brand new and it's a little bit different than anything else that they may have purchased or any other business uh, equipment that they may have acquired. Uh, so there's a, a coaching process and a learning curve for our clients that that's uh, I think is somewhat unique given it's an aircraft uh, purchase. Okay. All right. Very good. And um, um, as we continue, um, so can you describe a typical client engagement at uh, your firm uh, from the initial consultation to the implementation and monitoring of an aviation tax plan that you have put together yourself? Sure. Yeah. So the, the process typically starts with a phone call or email exchange that ultimately leads to hopping on a call, either a Zoom call, or sometimes we just do a, do a call over the phone. But we wanna gather facts about that aircraft purchaser. And to be clear, all of our clients own aircraft. Uh, if, our, if there's someone who doesn't own an aircraft, then they're, they're not our, our client. The only thing we do is advise on aircraft uh, tax matters. So we gather facts related to the taxpayer, uh, the aircraft they're acquiring, where they're gonna base the plane and, and, and some of the other relevant facts. And then we tailor our engagement to what they need from us. So for example, if it's a business owner flying a plane around for business related travels, we would do what we would call a full service engagement where we help them with sales and use tax planning and then also with income tax planning. So depreciating the plane, writing off expenses, properly accounting for personal and entertainment use of the plane. Versus if it's a, a, a an aircraft purchaser that's going to fly the plane for non-business use, and maybe they're not a business owner, maybe they're an employee, but they still need help with sales and use tax planning. We'll do a more limited scope engagement to just help with the sales and use tax planning piece. So typically we have that initial consultation, either call or Zoom meeting, and then we'll put together a fee proposal, send that over to the aircraft purchaser, uh, and if they decide to work with us, uh, then we proceed after that point in time. Fantastic. So let's talk about that. So, you know, tax planning is um, ever evolving and ever changing. So how do you help clients navigate the complex landscape of maximizing the income tax savings and minimizing the sales and use tax while, insurance while ensuring compliance with the IRS? Yeah, there's obviously a couple moving pieces. So we want to optimize all of those areas to the extent uh, possible. And that's really where our value is because we have the opportunity to participate in so many of these transactions every year. We kind of know what's possible and what's not possible because we've went through these iterations many times. Uh, and like I said, that's a, that's a, a part of our value because our uh, client CPAs or an aircraft purchaser CPAs Maybe they dealt with one or two aircraft transactions, but the facts are probably different. And we, we need to tailor our solution and tax planning to what the, what the facts are. Uh, so we're balancing those sales and use tax considerations with the income tax considerations. Also very important that the structure uh, for the buyer is FAA compliant as well. So multiple areas intersect and we need to determine what uh, is optimal accounting for all those items. I think you're muted, David. Thank you. So um, in terms of the your services, the implementation and the structure of the taxes is what you build, but you don't actually do the tax return itself, or do you? We do not file any tax returns, uh, but typically the way that we set up the ownership structure for a income tax motivated client, or really if they're not, even if it's just a personal use only plan, typically there's not a new income tax return to be filed. 99% uh, of the time, probably, probably beyond that, is uh, we, we arrive at an ownership structure that does not create a new tax filing. It's either the existing business entity that the buyer has continues filing a tax return that now includes the plane. 
or if it's a personal use only plane, there may not be a whole lot of uh, income tax uh, reporting requirement. Uh, so, so either way, um, we do not handle any income tax return filings. However, there probably will not be a new uh, return to be filed. Okay, very good. So let's continue with the uh, regulatory changes, such as an update to bonus depreciation in the section 179, 179 expensing. How does that impact your strategies for aviation tax planning? Yeah, and so we have bonus depreciation slowly phasing down. So it's generally at 60% in 2024. It's scheduled to go down to 40% in 2025, down 20% each year. They're on until it goes to zero, uh, which is not optimal from our from our client's perspective. We 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 and them would like for that to be 100% again. Uh, there looked to be a window of opportunity to get that done. There was a bill that passed the House uh, in late January. Uh, mm -hmm. People were optimistic that that would get uh, passed by the Senate as well, but it's seemingly stalled. So what it looks like for 2024 is we're going to have 60% uh, bonus. And then Section 179, as you mentioned, David, is an option as well, especially for a piston plane. Uh, Section 179 can be massively helpful. It can almost function similarly to 100% bonus depreciation uh, at some purchase price uh, ranges. Uh, and that's not sunsetting. Uh, so okay. that's, that's a good. very useful tool for our, our uh, clients that own piston aircraft or, or just a general aircraft at that $1.1-ish million purchase price and lower. So for the listeners and watchers uh, that are on this, uh, watching this, um, just describe a little bit about what Section 179 is. I think I jumped a little bit ahead in terms of ask, asking 179. Yes, yeah, Section 179 is an accelerated depreciation uh, provision as well. And it's different than bonus depreciation because bonus depreciation, basically, if you take 60% bonus depreciation, you take that amount and then you get the first year or five year makers as well. And it's a set schedule. You don't get to pick what you get in year one. You get that amount and then you get the set amounts in years two, three, four, five, and so forth. Uh, Section 179 can actually allow you to pick a number. Uh, so it's uh, different and can can be really helpful, actually, in that regard. However, uh, without going too deep into the weeds, there's more. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> yeah, th there's more requirements with Section 179. Hmm. Uh, so there's a couple of things us and our client CPAs need to check on to see if we can utilize Section 179. If we can utilize it, how much can we utilize? There's some limitations there that need to be checked on. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, so let's uh, continue to talk about uh, interstate tax exemptions. You kind of briefly uh, talked a little bit about that. ATC works with clients in various states, obviously, to minimize or eliminate the sales tax on aircraft purchases. How do you tailor your strategies to complying with the different state regulations and be able to maximize the tax benefits for your clients? Yeah, absolutely. So every state has different sales and use tax law. And I'll start with the sales tax piece and work my way to the to the use tax piece. But essentially, when an aircraft purchaser closes on a plane, where that plane is sitting at the moment when closing occurs is where you can have a sales tax liability. So that's a, a very important part of our planning. We want to help our clients uh, minimize their sales tax liability. So we want to make sure the plane is sitting in a sales tax friendly state when closing occurs. There's a lot of sales tax friendly states. Some states don't have sales tax. Some states specifically exempt all aircraft from sales tax. And then there's other states that have what we call a flyaway exemption, meaning you can close there, pick up the plane, leave. And if you're not basing the plane there, hangering the plane there, um, you're moving the plane back to wherever you live and basing the plane in that other state, then you don't owe any sales tax. So we wanna make sure the plane's sitting in a sales tax friendly state when closing occurs. That's something that my firm helps with. Uh, all the time. There's also right. a what we call a use tax liability when the plane gets back to its home state. So let's say, for example, we have someone who closes on a plane while it's sitting in Tennessee, and they pick up the plane from Tennessee, they meet the flyaway exemption in Tennessee, so they don't pay any Tennessee sales tax, but they bring the plane back to Florida to be hangered in Florida. They don't have to pay any sales tax, but they have to pay Florida use tax on the purchase price of the plane if an exemption is not met. Uh, so a lot of aircraft purchasers get caught off guard by that. They get what I would call a surprise tax bill from their home state because 
they weren't expecting to pay any uh, sales tax. They may not even know what use tax is, but they say, hey, how can I have to pay this tax to Florida? I closed on the plane while I was out of state. Unfortunately, use tax uh, is a legitimate tax liability that Florida can impose. Um, and we need to do proactive planning to mitigate that uh, liability or minimize that liability to the extent possible. Now, use tax is uh, a little bit more cumbersome or there's a little bit more work required to uh, minimize or eliminate that liability. Every state's different. Every state has different use tax exemptions. Um, so the best way to learn about what use tax exemptions you may be able to qualify for and claim in your state is to give us a call. By far the most efficient way to get answers. Call, call me, email me. Uh, we can hop on a call, maybe a very quick call, um, and we can get you some answers. And if we can help you, uh, and if you need to engage us, we can do that. Um, sometimes we just give you answers and you, and you go on your way. Um, so uh, that's definitely the most efficient way to learn what you may be able to, uh, uh, to do from a use tax planning perspective. Wow. There's a lot of moving parts there. Um, so let's talk about this. This is going to be a question that I really, really would am very much intrigued about. And as that the IRS has favorable rulings for business use of aircrafts, but balancing business and personal use can be a little tricky. How do you assist clients in documenting and optimizing the use of their airplanes for tax purposes? Yeah, so the IRS gives us very specific rules to follow for how to account for personal and entertainment and other non-business use of aircraft. Uh, if we follow their rules, uh, then we can feel comfortable that we're complying with all the requirements and our, our clients don't have to feel uh, bad about using the plane personally. Most of our clients do use their planes personally and for some entertainment use and other non-business uses uh, on occasion. So uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. We just have to properly account for it uh, in accordance with the IRS's regulations. Uh, so we help our clients with, uh, essentially we provide them with a flight log template that we have them keep where they document their various uses of the plane. And then we use that flight log template after year end to calculate what their percentage of deductibility is. What's the percentage of non-deductibility that should be applied to their depreciation in the bucket of expenses for the year. And then it, depending on the ownership structure, is there imputed income that needs to be picked up for personal use of the aircraft? So again, don't wanna to go too deep into the weeds, um, but there's uh, specific rules that need to be followed uh, and if you work with a tax advisor like us, we make it uh, as simple as we can for our clients to comply with those rules so that if there were to be an IRS audit, uh, we would be able to demonstrate that all the IRS's uh, regulations have been followed. Okay, perfect. Which leads me to the next question, which is, could you share a case study or a success story where your firm and yourself have the expertise that has significantly benefited a client, particularly uh, in regards to tax savings and compliance doing an aircraft uh, acquisition and then ownership? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially on the sales and use tax side, it's extremely tangible when we can come in and, and, and have a big uh, win for a client, especially when that client was expecting to pay, let's say, sales or use tax on the purchase price of the plane. So maybe it's a California-based client. We have lots of California-based clients that uh, they are aware of sales and use tax in California, and they kind of think that's the only option is just paying it. So let's say they're buying a million dollar aircraft and they had budgeted to pay about $100,000 of California use tax up front when they bought the plane. Um, if they reached out to us, we would be able to explain to them that there are some exemption opportunities in California. And let's say this buyer is a, a business owner that's going to use the plane primarily for interstate commerce. They need to fly to Seattle and Las Vegas and Denver for various business meetings. Um, they can qualify for what we call an interstate commerce exemption in California from California use tax if they uh, properly meet all the requirements and document it correctly. Um, and we would, of course, help them do that. So there can be a, a, a really substantial tax savings up front by doing good sales and use tax planning. In some states, in fact, there's even personal property tax planning that can be done to minimize uh, that liability wow. as cool. well. And then on, on the income tax side too, um, there, there's uh, opportunity there to one, you know, make sure we're complying properly with all the IRS's rules, very, very important to do. Um, but there's certain treatments for personal non-entertainment use and training and maintenance use uh, 
um, that's really pretty taxpayer friendly as well that they may not be uh, aware of. So we can be helpful in multiple respects there. Fantastic. Uh, appreciate the, some of the case, the, this particular case study that you shared with us. So um, advice for potential aircraft owners or future aircraft owners, um, what kind of advice or critical advice would you offer businesses considering the acquisition of aircraft regarding tax planning, the compliance, and of course, maximizing the total financial benefits of aircraft ownership? Yeah, well, one one piece of advice would be get started early on the tax planning. Don't don't wait until uh, the week before you're going to close and then say, oh, you know, we need to get the ownership structure structure figured out for for this acquisition. Uh, and you know, what are we going to do from a sales and use tax perspective? Uh, you want to get started at least two months or so prior to closing. Start thinking about these tax concepts and give uh, us a call or a firm like us. Uh, a call or an email so that we can start discussing these items. Um, it, we can work quickly to get the ownership structure in place, uh, but we want to have conversations with the buyer, their CPA, um, and any other uh, interested parties to make sure we're all in agreement on the ownership structure. We want to allow plenty of time for that. We don't want to get into a time crunch uh, as we move towards closing on the plane. So in other words, as as soon as you decide that you're going to purchase an aircraft for business use or partial business use, you want to, uh, the people that are participating in this, uh, the potential owners want to get a hold of uh, you to start talking uh, and having a conversation about this. Am I correct at that? Precisely. Yeah. The, the earlier, the better, really. And even if you're just starting to contemplate an aircraft acquisition and you're kicking the tires, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, I, we, we love to have those conversations and just say, you know, we don't we, we can save some of the details for later. But here's what you should be thinking about from a sales and use tax planning perspective. Here's the timeline to get us looped back in. And then from an income tax perspective, based on the facts related to your business and how you're planning to utilize the plane. Generally, here's what you can expect. And we'll help you with all this as you get closer to closing. You don't need to retain all of this information, of course, um, but giving them a, a high level overview uh, of the tax, the possible tax planning uh, can be really helpful in those early stages. Absolutely. So in terms of future trends in aviation taxation, what, what emerging trends do you foresee in aviation taxation? And how does your firm and yourself prepare to address these trends to continue to provide top-notch services for the clients that you serve. Yeah, it's a it's an ever-changing landscape, both from a, a federal income tax perspective, um, with the IRS basically announcing that they're becoming more interested in aircraft. They put out an announcement uh, earlier this year, uh, stating that effectively, um, and also on the on the state sales and use tax side, um, states are becoming uh, a bit more aggressive about uh, asserting that sales and use tax is due on aircraft, especially use tax, the home state where the aircraft is based. And those climates are constantly changing and every state is different. So the, the benefit of working with a firm like ours is we have many, many clients. Uh, so we have many interactions with each state and with the IRS. So we're aware of what that landscape looks like at any given point in time. And we're able to advise uh, all of our other clients, future clients, based on those interactions um, versus just relying on, like I said, your, your normal CPA. Maybe they've had a couple of uh, clients that have owned aircraft, but they haven't had nearly the number of interactions or different fact patterns um, uh, with their other clients. So uh, that's, that's certainly a part of the value that we provide is uh, kind of feeling the pulse of what's going on both from a federal income tax perspective and a sales and use tax perspective with the, with the various states. I think you might be uh, muted, David. Sorry. Uh, so given the continuous ever-changing environment in the tax laws, uh, I think it's vitally important that uh, those that are thinking about purchasing an aircraft should give you a call uh, even again, if they're just thinking uh, and kicking the tires, uh, so to speak, um, to give you a call and have at least a general conversation, if nothing else, to see uh, how the structure and how you can help them 
uh, mitigate those uh, taxes that they otherwise have to pay. I I completely agree. And it can be a, a fairly short call, um, sometimes, you know, 15 or 20 minutes, and we can give you a lot of answers in that time frame. So any, anyone considering an aircraft acquisition, I would encourage uh, to, to reach out to us uh, as early as you can have that initial discussion. And we can have another more detailed discussion in the months leading up to, to, to closing. And when a potential client is looking to give you a call, do, you, do they pay a fee to you or is the initial consultation complimentary? The latter initial con- consultation okay. is is uh, without charge. Um, if if there's uh, a way in which we can help, then we'll put together a fee proposal and send that along to the aircraft purchaser. And at their discretion, they can sign that if they want to work with us. But otherwise, no charge for that initial consultation. Well, that's just fantastic. Uh, complimentary consultation. They are charged. And the proposal for the fee is only given when you know that you can provide them value. Is that correct? Exactly. Fantastic. So uh, that leads me to my next question, which could potentially be my final question. Given that the intricate nature of aviation tax laws and the potential for significant financial repercussions, how do you approach a situation where a client previous tax advisor has made a substantial error in their aviation tax planning. Can you share an example of such a scenario and step back uh, and take a look and, and, uh, or at least take a uh, think about it and tell me how you've rectified that issue while maintaining compliance and optimize uh, that client's uh, tax uh, benefits? That, that scenario unfolds relatively frequently. Oh, wow. Both both from a federal income tax perspective and from a, a sales and use tax perspective too, where we're brought in because there's some sort of problem where the aircraft owner or their CPA realizes that uh, a mistake of some sort has been made or they haven't been properly complying with uh, some aspect of the tax planning. So they bring us in and we're, we're very happy to help in those situations and kind of take a look and see what can we do at this point in time to clean up the compliance here uh, to the extent possible, uh, both going backwards and going forwards. And our options depend on what the what the facts are. So for example, if it's a if it's a use tax liability that's being imposed by a state, we'll take a look and see if there's any exemptions that potentially apply that we could uh, help support uh, to try to eliminate that use tax that's being imposed. But our our options are much more limited when we're working retroactively, of course. We can't go back and change the the facts. So that's why we like to get involved so early. Our planning is much, much more effective if we can do it proactively before closing occurs. Yeah, Um, absolutely. You want to be ahead of it and you don't want to have to clean up a mistake uh, with after the fact type of a scenario. To not make the mistake is probably the best thing. And our options are... Uh, much more limited when we're assisting after the fact as well. There's many more options on the table if we're planning proactively, generally speaking. And then on the federal income tax side, uh, there's uh, uh, often uh, clients of ours that will loop us in after they've already purchased the aircraft. Maybe they've even owned it for a couple of years, but they realize, hey, I don't think we're accounting for personal use or entertainment use exactly as we should be. Um, we should bring somebody in to take a look. And oftentimes we come in and say, yeah, you, you uh, unfortunately you haven't been following the regulations to uh, a T, but we can help you do so um, and clean up things retroactively uh, to the extent possible uh, as well. So if, if you're listening to this and you're realizing, Hey, I don't know if I've, if I've, uh, if I've done everything exactly uh, to a T the way they should have been done, feel free to give me a call. We can chat. Maybe you have, and you and I can give you some peace of mind, or maybe I can um, can can propose some ways that we can help. So KJ, can you tell me, in terms of a high level, uh, the income tax, property tax, personal tax uh, type of scenarios where having an aircraft can be potentially beneficial? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, most of our clients are business owners. Those are the, the, the main aircraft purchasers that can derive substantial income tax benefits from the plane itself. 
if you're a business owner, you're flying around to your various uh, business meetings using the plane. That's generally what can generate very useful uh, deductions. Uh, unfortunately, W-2 employees uh, have much uh, a much tougher time deriving any income tax benefits from the plane um, because their travels around related to their employer if they don't own the company and they're purely just a W-2 employee will generally be non-deductible. Um, so most of our clients are uh, uh, business owners. However, if you're a W-2 employee, you still need to do good sales and use tax planning and understand what your personal property tax liability would be. So it's Absolutely. still certainly worth a call to, to our firm or, or a firm like us to talk about the sales and use tax and personal property tax planning piece. And we can also discuss in more specifics, the income tax scenario uh, for you to see, you know, confirm if there are income tax benefits available or not. Uh, but either way, there's the sales and use tax and, and personal property tax component. Fantastic. So in other words, give you a call. It's complimentary consultation. And uh, there's no uh, there's no fall. Uh, it's all it's nothing but to, anything to but to gain everything but to gain um, to participate in giving you a call. Am I right at that? Absolutely. OK, very good. So second opinion services uh, sure. from from your firm and yourself. Fantastic. Sure. Fantastic. I thought I thought this whole entire interview has, I've learned a lot and I aspire to, uh, in working with you in the future with uh, my clients that may have these type of concerns and uh, certainly will uh, be introducing uh, those people to you. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to help in any way that I can. Uh, feel free to reach out with uh, any questions that you have, David, and any listener uh, here, uh, give me a call or an email. Don't hesitate to. I'm happy to help. Fantastic. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Jet Setting Wealth Advisory. I hope you found our discussion with KJ McCarter insightful and beneficial for your tax planning and business development needs. If you have any questions or would like to learn more, please don't hesitate to contact us. And you can contact KJ directly at email kj at aviationconsultants.com. Aviation tax consultants operate in two convenient locations, Columbus, Indiana, and Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm David Yu, airline pilot, founder, and wealth advisor at DTY Wealth Planning Solutions. Be sure to subscribe and leave us a review. And until next time, keep your financial goals in focus and your strategy sharp. Thank you for flying with us on today's episode of Jet Setting Wealth Advisory. If you enjoyed your journey through the fiscal skies with David T. Yu, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and keep your financial knowledge soaring. For more insights and personalized advice, visit us at www.dtywealthplanningsolutions.com and connect with David directly 